The race to the White House has turned into a crawl, with America still standing by for confirmation of its next president. The vital states of Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Arizona are hanging on razor-thin margins, with the clouds of legal action gathering. And Donald Trump is now just 1,775 votes ahead of Joe Biden in the traditionally Republican state of Georgia. But arguably, the speeches today from the two presidential hopefuls drew a thundering contrast between the pair. Democrat Joe Biden spoke first. He said he'd been briefed on the country's COVID status and calmly insisted it would be voters and nothing else that decides the race to the Oval Office. Donald Trump's address from the White House press room was more freestyle, with the incumbent musing that the highest court in the land may decide the winner. While well, joining us now from Washington DC with the latest is CNN's Nadia Romero. Nadia, does it feel a bit like Groundhog Day? there. <laughs> it does, Lisa. You know, uh, every day we are up early. We stay up early into the wee hours of the next morning. You try to go to sleep for a little bit, and then when you wake up, it seems like everything has changed, but then everything is the same. We are still watching the same five or so states as those. You're starting to see the, the, the lead changing in much, much slimmer margins, whether we're talking about Georgia or Pennsylvania in Nevada and Arizona. We're losing you a tiny bit, Nadia. We'll see how we go and, and if it's bad we'll try and get you back. But can you bring us okay. up to can you bring us up to date with those states that you're talking about, the ones that you're eyeballing constantly? Yeah, you mentioned Georgia, and this is a traditionally red state that uh, hasn't been blue since 1992 with helping to elect President Bill Clinton. And so this is a state where uh, Democrats and really uh, black Democrats have been working to mobilize the vote. And you're seeing a change in Fulton County, which is where Atlanta is, where the uh, Summer Olympics happened years ago. And that is a county that is known as Black Hollywood. That's where you'll find black doctors and lawyers and athletes and entertainers. Um, in what is also called the New York City of the South. And so it's, it's that area where we saw a lot of those absentee ballots come in, uh, very, very, very blue areas, counties, and that's why you're seeing President Trump's lead narrow. So right now we have about 99% of our precincts reporting uh, President Donald Trump is up by about 2,000 votes, uh, statistically a tie at 49.4 percent, and there are about 16,000 absentee ballots still out. And and that doesn't also, um, we still have to include provisional ballots and military ballots from our service and women overseas. So that was too close to call. If the Democrats were able to pull off Georgia, it would not only uh, give Joe Biden the presidency, it would be an emotional move for black Americans um, who have been fighting for the right to vote. And, and Georgia has been at the forefront of that. That is the state where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. hailed. And that's where uh, Congressman John Lewis uh, was a congressman in, in Georgia. And he just passed away. And so that would be um, a, a big moment for black Americans and the right to vote and being a part of this de democratic process. When we look in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is a state where we have several lawsuits by the Trump uh, campaign, and the president's lead is narrowing there. Um, he has, he's up right now by about 30,000 votes, and only 95 percent of all the precincts are, are reporting right now. If you go to Arizona, Nevada, it's a slightly different story where Joe Biden is up and the president is gaining as absentee ballots are coming back from red or Republican areas. So it's just too close to call. It is a nail biter. Um, I have family members and friends texting and calling me for the inside scoop because everyone is watching this, trying to figure out what's going going to happen next. Nadia, what did happen today is we saw both candidates come out and speak. Donald Trump the first time in person since he, well, declared his own victory on election night, nor Joe Biden gave another speech today. They were quite the contrast, weren't they, those two speeches? They were, Lisa. You saw Joe Biden come out first. Uh, he talked a lot about wanting to unify the country, waiting that democracy will work, that we have to be patient, and that he believes he will prevail when it's all said and done. President Trump came out, and, well, it's what we expected, right? If you've been following his Twitter feed, he has been saying that Democrats are out there trying to steal the election and that he had won the election on election night, and then magically these ballots appeared, and all of them were for Joe Biden, 
And now the, the, the country um, is watching what he calls the greatest fraud in American history and what he believes to be um, the stealing of this election. This is just not true. There hasn't been evidence of widespread voter fraud or, or really any um, and nothing that will make a dent. Right. We saw one case where there were about 50 ballots that um, seemed to be duplicates, but 50 ballots out of the millions of people who voted. It, it doesn't even make a mark. Um, the president has made a lot of baseless claims and he's upset that um, he feels like they should have called the election on election night. Well, elections in America are never called on election night. You have projected winners, but you always have absentee ballots that come in after election day. And in most states, those absentee ballots or mail-in ballots have to be postmarked by election day, but each state has different rules on when they can arrive. In North Carolina, they can arrive up to nine days after election day. In Pennsylvania, they have three days to arrive. So technically in Pennsylvania, they won't be done counting uh, at least until Friday at 5 p.m. when those last uh, mail-in ballots can arrive and, and still count. This happens in every election. It's happened since our great civil war of 1865 so that those military men could participate in the election at that time. So this isn't anything new. It just doesn't favor the president. Um, and I've used the analogy before. It's like the president wants to stop the game at halftime or we have another full half to play. He wants to stop at halftime because he's up. And that's what he asked the American people to agree with. And that's just not how our democracy works. Nadia, we're almost out of time, but I really do want to touch on this. So is some heat coming on Donald Trump around his use of the White House for campaign business, you know, staying there during election night and, and setting up his war room there for the election? And this is something that we, we really haven't seen before. Um, this goes back to even just the, the RNC, the Republican National Convention, was held at the White House. And, and many people felt like um, that was um, going against U.S. law, that there should be a division between the White House and your re-election campaign. But for the first time ever, a president held his convention of his party at the White House. And um, we've seen members of the president's staff, you have the White House press secretary, Kaylee McEnany, appearing on Fox News and other networks um, talking about her support for the president. Well, she is paid by the American people to work basically for the American people as a liaison between the press and the president. She is not paid to be on his campaign. That's a different pool of money. That's a different title. But she goes back and forth as she, as she feels. Um, and so this is something that we've seen by the Trump administration and the Trump campaign where they muddle the lines. And it's really a way for the president to have the taxpayers or the American people pay for things that his campaign should be paying for or all other presidents have usually had that division. Um, it is also the president's goal to make himself look like the president even if he's losing this election. So he wanted to have the Republican National Convention at the White House because he wants to implant in everyone's mind that that's where he should be. He doesn't want to go anywhere else but the White House right now because he doesn't plan on leaving the White House. He plans on being reelected re for another four years. So this is the president's show of force. But we know from um, many reports that his campaign was losing money, hemorrhaging, and had to ask the Republican National Convention and big donors to pour in money towards the end of his re-election bid, so about last week or so, and Joe Biden's campaign was outspending tr Trump's campaign two to one. Now he's facing uh, all of these legal actions that he himself is putting up, lawsuits in several different states. And I just want to throw out this number here quickly, $3.5 million. That's how much it costs to do a recount in Wisconsin in 2016. The president is flirting with the idea of doing recounts in several states. He has lawsuits in several states, some all the way going up to our highest court of the land, the Supreme Court of the United States. That will cost him millions and millions of dollars. Lisa? Great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. That is Nadia Romero from CNN, who is in Washington, D.C., waiting as the numbers roll in very slowly.